All right. Welcome everyone to the virtual Southeast Greenways and Trails Summit. Uh, we are here with Alex Spengler uh, from Penn State Stuckman School, um, School of Land Architecture and Landscape Architecture. So we will be uh, recording a session here for um, the 4 p.m. slot, April 3rd. Uh, I'm going to share my screen for a few slides real quick. All right, can you see that? Loading for a second. All right, wanted to give a big thanks to all the sponsors, um, without which we couldn't have this, um, and the flexibility to switch from uh, in-person summit in Jacksonville. Unfortunately, not able to do that, but. Um, we are going virtual uh, for the first time and uh, really excited today to, to welcome Alec um, talking today about Greyways, Industrial Rings as Opportunities for Trail Planning, again from the Penn State Stuckman School of Architecture and Landscape Architecture. And I'm going to pass over the presenter control and we'll get started. Okay, so um, I think I am live. And so, yeah, I want to uh, thank uh, Daniel for um, helping to set this up for me. Uh, like everyone, I was bummed to not be there in person. Um, but it's been actually a great um, experience putting this together remotely. Um, I had planned a kind of um, design charrette activity which um, I think would have been fun, um, but it was also a, a cool experience for me to just kind of have a charrette of one and um, talk about some of the ideas that I found exciting on, on this particular topic. So um, I do want to make one um, caveat. Uh, this, uh, since it was designed as, as more of an activity, um, I, I talk about um, various uh, research efforts, planning efforts, scholarship, um, that that are meant as prompts uh, to think about certain problems. Um, I think in the charrette context, that comes off, uh, you know, as, as an informal thing. And now that it's being presented as as um, in a little more of a formal um, format, I just want to make sure that it's clear these are not people I've coordinated with. Um, I'm presenting their work, of course, citing it. Um, um, as as uh, unbiased as possible, and, and just um, some of the ideas that I'm presenting are reactions to that. Um, and of course, uh, all all of their work is cited, and I also want to mention that um, there are some ideas that that I present that that are my own, but that may very well um, be similar to to other things that people are thinking about um, as they look at this issue. People have been more directly involved than myself. Um, so I called this. Um, uh, talks, presentation, uh, Greyways, Industrial Rings as Opportunities for Trail Planning. Um, and part of this comes from um, just my personal interest in uh, bicycling and, and kind of exploring forgotten places. Um, and this particular study came out of uh, the, the ride from, in my case, West Philadelphia to Hoboken, New Jersey, um, which uh, as sort of a stand-in for getting to the greater New York metro area. Um, so I've done this ride uh, twice, and I've used it as a kind of ground true thing, um, testing for um, just what it's like to move as a human being um, on a bike between these two big um, important metropolitan areas, um, kind of in this, this um, mega region and to see what, what the gaps are and what the issues are and what the opportunities are. Um, so this is from a ride in 2018. Um, this was my ride in, in the dash black, um, which is about 100 miles versus the East Coast Greenway route, um, which is about 120 miles. Um, so of course the Greenway um, 
is routed through uh, more welcoming landscapes whenever possible, um, avoiding inhospitable places, which is just as it should be. Um, for me, there was something kind of magic about the 100 mile um, threshold uh, for a somewhat serious biker. It's, it's kind of um, the point at which you can do a one one day ride. And so um, I could do this in, in one day. And um, for for others, it, it means it's possible to do it in, in two days comfortably. Um, and I thought that was uh, really significant for for tying together these these two areas. Um, so um, just the idea of, of that distance. Um, the, the map this is overlaid on is um, something that I put together um, after after doing these rides. And uh, it's showing something that I think everybody sort of knows about, um, about you know, standard East Coast cities, which is uh, they have these industrial rings around them. Um, but I wanted to, uh, again, kind of test that uh, for um, what the experience was on, on a bicycle. And so um, these are um, connectivity scores. And um, I'm seeing that the, actually the reference to um, how that the um, connectivity score is calculated is, is not on the slide. I'll get that back on there. But um, versus impervious surfaces as, as kind of an overlay. Um, so what you get is um, uh, kind of, again, what you'd expect that urban districts, you get this um, blue color. So you're getting good connectivity, um, high impervious surface. Uh, so those are um, good places to, to walk around and to bike. Um, on the other end of the spectrum, um, you've got the countryside, um, low impervious surface. Um, as long as there's some throughway, uh, these are usually hospitable to, to walkers and bikers too, or can be made um, to be so pretty easily. Um, and then this final category, um, what's been called uh, DROS by, by many scholars, is, uh, ends up being, of course, the, uh, this outer ring of industry and infrastructure that, that ends up being around cities. Um, so I took a look at the um, this New York New Jersey connection, and no surprise, that's so full of um, airports and shipping ports and manufacturing, uh, power generation, and things like that. Um, so I was really interested in um, kind of how how you approach that, um, and there's lots of um, interesting theoretical literature from, from scholars and, and designers about uh, the idea of DROS, which is uh, coined by Lars Larson in 1994, um, famously discussed uh, by Alan Berger in his book DROSscape, um, this kind of wasted land. It's uh, land being used for, for a purpose, um, for some kind of industry, uh, but it sort of becomes um, irrelevant to the human experience. Um, and then there are two people who uh, I had the, um, the good fortune to, to meet and work with a little bit um, when I worked at Michael Van Valkenburg Associates. Um, and these, of course, are, are not the only people talking about this, but um, Ken Greenberg and Gulliver uh, Shepard, an MBA principal, and Ken a Greenberg, a consultant, who are very interested in um, vacant industrial land and the opportunities for uh, recreation in cities. This is kind of an, a, an old idea by now. Um, but uh, Gulliver, my old boss in particular, um, had some really interesting thoughts about uh, the type of landscape that you find, especially on urban waterfronts, former industrial areas. So this is from a project that we worked on on the, the um, traditionally industrialized north branch of the Chicago River. And you can see the kind of um, scale of uh, develop of, um, of like housing stock and, and landscape on that uh, in this image, the um, southwest side of the river, and the kinds of um, sort of wacky uh, recreational activities that that fit really well into that scale. Um, and of course, that goes along with, uh, in this case, the Chicago River Walk, so river specific recreation, um, which uh, also goes along with um, kind of flood mitigation, habitat restoration, all sorts of opportunities in, in these former industrial spaces, which tend to be along uh, waterways. Um, it's an article that came out last year um, 
by Nicole Stevsner um, in Landscape Architecture Magazine that um, made me think even more about um, active infrastructure. And uh, this is a great um, study of, of the kind of impending opportunities as we hopefully make transition to a new um, energy infrastructure and um, the kind of space that's taken up by alternative energy, which in, is in some cases uh, even more than, than traditional energy production. And uh, kind of getting in on the, the ground floor of that as designers and planners. Um, and in the article, he makes a lot of great parallels to uh, WPA and, and in many cases, the, the great recreational landscapes that were um, created along with uh, other really ambitious landscape projects. Um, this is from a, um, a bike ride that I took uh, through Ontario. And, and so, of course, you see this happening in some places. This is a bike trail through uh, East Nuclear Water um, Power Generation Plant. So this can be done in um, very modest ways. This was along with some habitat for restoration. So um, this brings me to uh, this idea that I had for a, a charrette activity. Um, and um, it's focused on what I think of as this major pinch point um, for the Greenway and, and for anybody trying to bicycle or, or walk um, between uh, North New Jersey suburbs and uh, New York City, or at least to get to um, 24-7 public transportation in New York, um, or for people who um, want to take that adventure ride from Philly to New York. Um, interestingly enough, I think up until a couple of weeks ago, uh, this was the only um, way to cross uh, Newark Bay slash um, the Passaic and um, Hackensack River and these industrial areas that are along it. Um, so, you know, there's a real concentration of, of, uh, of challenges and potentials at, at this moment. Um, you'll see in the next few slides that that's opening up a little bit uh, with some recent changes. Um, but my thought was to um, look at this area and um, I'm, I'm not a, a trail planner by profession. I, um, I don't have a large background in that except through personal experience. Uh, worked as a landscape architect architect and um, and as a professor recently. Um, my thought was to look at some um, some of the big planning efforts that, that I'm aware of from that region and overlay those with um, the, the needs, the opportunities, um, the challenges of trail planning and see if there are um, kind of synchronicities that, that um, haven't really been exploited um, and, and new ideas. And this was the perfect place to focus because it's kind of the most challenging um, of those pinch points um, and those tricky areas um, in, in the Greenway, I think, in at least my experience of it. Um, uh, but it's also an area that's been studied endlessly um, for good reason. Uh, it's just a huge population center with a lot of interesting uh, potentials. Um, so looking at some of those planning efforts and seeing if ideas can come out of that. Um, so I came up with three study areas, uh, the Gothels Bridge, uh, the Ports, and Trinity Point. And for each of those, um, each had an interesting uh, new or, or uh, through crossing over uh, these waterways, um, or a little bit of potential for one. Um, each one uh, connected with uh, at least some major planning effort, if not more than one. Um, or some impending change to create new opportunities for trails. And then each one had the potential, um, I believe, for that trail planning to work, um, uh, say, in concert with broader landscape improvements, uh, including ecological and economic benefits. So these are the three study areas um, outlined on the map. And uh, this is the point at which, you know, I would throw it out to people uh, um, if this were the uh, charrette activity, you know, what do you think about these things? Uh, let's take a look at some of the plans. Um, what ideas do those give you? What are things that seem um, kind of crazy, but um, could be um, could be something real given the changes that are happening in places like this? Um, so I went ahead and I, I kind of um, went through some of the ideas that I have, um, starting with the the Gothels Bridge. So. Um, 
folks who are focused on, on this part of um, New York and New Jersey and, and trail planning um, probably know about this. It was really exciting when I found out that uh, the Gothels Bridge bike path, which has been in existence for a couple of years, but not open, um, was just open recently, um, along with a pretty new uh, Bayonne Bridge bike path. So you, you can um, make the uh, bike trip or the, the walking trip from a kind of mainland uh, New Jersey all the way over to the peninsula that has Bayonne and Jersey City. And for people who don't know New York, um, New Jersey area that well, that means that you can get on the PATH train um, anytime, day or night, and, and go straight over to Manhattan um, if you're not up for the ride um, all the way up to the George Washington Bridge in northern Manhattan. It basically connects you to um, downtown New York. Um, so these uh, connections are really exciting um, right now. That's that's happening, and um, here you can see the East Coast Greenway route um, kind of in the, the lower corner of the image. And it makes me think about um, new possibilities for uh, a route or an uh, alternate route of the Greenway. Um, and uh, there are some some exciting ideas about uh, already that people are talking about in um, Staten Island for uh, routing North Shore Trail to connect those two points. Um, what I was interested in is, uh, so what, is, what does that mean for the, the bigger, what's the bigger connection? Um, and I just took as a premise that uh, what if we want to connect from Rahway, um, which is kind of a, a major um, turning point in the Greenway, uh, where there's public transportation. You can see in the blue, uh, these are New Jersey transit stops. Um, what if you wanted to connect to this new uh, Gothels Bridge, um, Bayonne Bridge uh, crossing? Um, so I took a look at two possibilities, uh, connecting up to the Elizabeth River Trail, which is um, uh, maybe sort of the, the traditional route. Um, there's been a lot of great trail development up there. Um, brings you up to Elizabeth, another uh, great urban center that could benefit from a trail connection. Um, past Linden, another um, transit hub. Um, so the benefits of that are, are, are pretty obvious. But then I, I had this thought about an alternate um, connection, which is a little bit um, more provocative, I guess, which is through the Bayway Refinery. Um, and so this is just, to, again, uh, kind of prompting questions. Um, Bayway Refineries have kind of had a pretty infamous uh, past in terms of um, pollution and, um, and impacting the health of the people who, who live near there. Um, and pretty recently, there was an enormous um, uh, suit against the operators that was settled for a very small amount in the end. So um, in my imagination, I was thinking, you know, what do you do uh, with 9 billion in addition to environmental remediation? Are there ways that trails can be a part of that? You can take a small amount of that money and kind of do something with it that will uh, increase uh, accountability of, of those operators. So um, these are some of the questions that, that I ask in remediation of uh, environmental damage and food recovery of potential trail connections. Um, so this suit was about uh, damages to the um, to the landscape in that in that area, which would have been marshes at one time. Um, so we're losing those ecosystem services, uh, but we're also losing the opportunity to connect through those areas for people. So can we recover that? Um, could Linden, which is about the health impacts of the refinery operation, benefit economically from a new trail hub? You might think so. Um, would a mandated trail connection increase visibility and accountability of refinery operations? What happens when you route a trail right through or right next to um, large industrial operations? You have eyes on it. Um, and then if remediation called for environmental loss, uh, called for and environmental lawsuits had a more uh, visible public component, uh, like a trail connection, would it have been as easy to sidestep? You know, if people had an image of, of what was at stake here. Um, these things are often hidden from view um, from people other than those who are right next to it. So the second um, study area was uh, what I call the ports, so the airport and the shipping port. Um, and I looked through two uh, pretty recent planning documents, um, the fourth regional plan by the Regional Plan Association, which a huge sprawling document with many different reports. Uh, this one was about um, 
revamping um, metropolitan airports. And then the um, Port Authority, New York, New Jersey Port Authority Master Plan um, uh, 2050 vision. So um, here we see the, the East, Coast, East Coast Greenway route um, kind of skirting these areas. Um, traditionally, you wouldn't think of uh, ports as being hospitable to, to routing trails through. Um, but I looked at uh, these planning documents and looked at a few of the proposed changes. Um, so these are changes that are possible and, and kind of far out, um, but, but could happen. And just a few of the things that are marked on here, the possible expansion of the airport, um, a new shipping um, cargo field, um, a, a revised uh, connection to public transit. Um, and then uh, Port Authority Master Plan um, revising the public roads that, that go along the ports, um, partly with an eye towards increasing public access um, to the port areas, which is something that I'll talk about in a minute. So um, it's interesting to think about the this connection if you are um, wanting to activate this port area and a more uh, waterfront route for, for the Greenway or a trail. Um, you have this uh, expansion area, which is um, right in between downtown Elizabeth and what that connection would be to the ports. Um, could you leverage that um, for a new trail connection um, and some kind of dedicated trail route through, through those areas? Um, pretty possible to integrate bicycle and pedestrian access um, to the airport to, um, through the new rail terminal, terminal as a spur from the Greenway. Um, and then uh, again, this this would create um, maybe a, a real amenity for Elizabeth as a, a new trail hub for their downtown. Um, and then that asks the question, and I'm sure folks have looked at this. Um, I think that the, the railroad company is holding on to this right of way, and I haven't seen any, any major plans um, for for this actually happening. But there is this. Uh, disused elevated CNG railway corridor that leads right into downtown Elizabeth, um, which could maybe be um, this landmark amenity as, as a trail connection for, um, for Elizabeth. And then, then what was really interesting to me was um, looking at the ports master plan um, and finding uh, in the plan itself um, that stakeholders had expressed this desire to have a greater access um, and interaction with waterfront facilities. People want to, to be able to be around the ports, um, to know what's going on there, um, to have a connection um, to the water. Um, people are seeing that happening, I think, in, in major downtowns, and, and um, there's a desire for it. Um, and then I took a look at this uh, report, uh, Robert Lombach from Rutgers, about the environmental and health impacts of the ports. Um, there's been a lot of controversy recently about uh, the truck fleet in particular and, and kind of a lag on on making the transition to, to cleaner truck engines and these nearby neighborhoods are really taking the, the brunt of this and that's an example of um, this out of sight out of mind as, as Lombok puts it um, attitude that people have about this kind of infrastructure um, so there it's not just a kind of flight of fancy there really is a, um, a desire out there to to bring people to these places um, to increase the accountability of, of how they function. So some general questions to ask about this uh, port study area um, as transportation and shipping infrastructure is rebuilt and retrofitted for cleaner operations. Can public trails be folded in? Uh, will increased public access through trails strengthen public advocacy for clean, safe operations and lead to greater accountability by operators? And can trails be overlaid with landscape-based flood mitigation strategies? This is already happening in some places. Uh, you see trails on the top of levees in some cities. Um, these are going to be increasingly important for waterfront infrastructure. So um, a lot of that port's master plan was how do we um, how do we protect these increasingly economically important ports um, from, from storm surge, sea level rise, and, and uh, their environmental effects. Um, so when you look about at landscape-based solutions for those things, um, vegetated spillways, things like that, um, 
trails are, are a natural um, partner for those things. So finally, we get to uh, CUNY Point. Um, and um, I'm curious to, to hear from folks how much um, they've been looking at these, these future potentials and, and planning um, documents that have been out about this area um, and vice versa, I guess. Um, here's the current uh, Greenway connection um, over the Hackensack and the Passaic uh, via Kearney Point. Um, this is a, a very tricky, um, tricky place to bike, especially the on-ramp on the um, Newark side. Um, and, you know, so there could be um, interim improvements to that, but uh, looking at um, this rebuild by design document, which is um, referenced a lot in, in landscape architecture circles, at least, I think probably for, for planners as well. Um, there are people who are looking at these big regional bicycle networks and um, Right there at the bottom, um, there's a proposal to recover an old uh, rail line um, alignment and um, a ruined rail bridge as a pedestrian connection across the, the southern tip of Kearney Point. Um, so that would have obvious um, exciting implications for the Greenway. Um, I discovered another um, a document by a private developer um, for a Kearney Point Industrial Park that was pretty interesting. Um, and one of the, the interesting things about it is um, there didn't seem to be any real mention of um, larger uh, bicycle or pedestrian connections. They had really interesting ideas about recovering the shoreline, uh, having kind of like really nice internal circulation, um, uh, naturalized water edge. Um, but if you see how it's placed with the current and maybe sometime future alignment of, of the Greenway, you can see it's straddling both. Um, so I thought there were really um, interesting opportunities there if people um, had a, an eye towards it to uh, connect this um, pretty small area to a, a really large network of trails um, at the biggest scale, at the, the Greenway, East Coast Greenway scale, but also um, perhaps a, a a local regional um, bike network um, that would help recover this um, industrial waterfront for people in the Ironbound neighborhood and elsewhere. Um, so, uh, you know, why not plan for um, these larger connections in mind when you're planning for this uh, industrial park? And um, given that there seems to be a lot of investments in, in Kearney Point, um, could these businesses, developers, um, be advocates um, not only for the localized development, but um, for these big trail connections, including the East Coast Greenway? Um, and then, you know, could you look at this this larger circuit um, that that would be an amenity for for the local neighborhoods? So, um, I'm ending with this slide, which is. Um, you can see the little East Coast Greenway sign um, underneath the, the, the shrub there. Um, this is coming off the, the current connection at any point um, and entering into Lincoln Park. And I show it because um, it's sort of emblematic of, of the, the tricky nature of this connection, but even more so um, for me, the, the sort of magic of, of the Greenway, um, these hidden worlds where either on a, a, a busy highway and you, you find a small gate and suddenly you're, you're in a pastoral park and you're in a completely different environment, or, or you find a, you know, follow a trail out of your local park and suddenly you're on this huge network that goes from uh, Maine to Florida. So I, I think that um, it's the beautiful thing about the, the Greenway for me and about the potential for these um, connections and, and why I'm so excited to look at, at these tricky areas. And that's it for me. Thanks. Um, I'll pass the screen back. All right. That was great. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I really, I really wish that we were in a charrette format. So we, <laughs> we had a lot of people, but maybe that's, um, this is just the beginning and maybe we can actually do that uh, with this presentation because that um, those are really important questions and I think that's uh, kind of exactly what makes me excited about 
um, East Coast Greenway, but about local greenways and, and the questions that it forces um, around these spaces. So thank you so much, Alec. Uh, really appreciate that. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Um, so I think we're going to end it right here, but I do want to pull up um, your email in case people do have questions. So um, uh, they can reach out to you on that. Um, and then also if you're sharing anything on social media, remember the, the hashtag for Greenway Summit. Um, and I think that that will do it for us. Um, thanks so much, everybody. I'm going to kind of stop the recording if I can do it right. <laughs> thanks, everyone. Thank you.